Welcome to the PADEP video tutorial series on non-community water system approvals. In this series, we will review the various components and requirements for the new approval process for non-community water systems. This video will cover the application and instructions. The non-community water system application consists of two documents, both of which have the same document number. The instructions for completing and submitting non-community water system application, shown here, goes over how to complete each section of the application. The general instructions stress that the non-community water system application is intended for systems utilizing groundwater that requires treatment no greater than hypochlorite or ultraviolet light disinfection to meet all primary MCLs. All systems submitting a non-community water system application should follow the guidance provided in the Public Water Supply Manual Part 4, Non-Community System Design Standards. A link for this guidance manual is included below. Any system that utilizes sources other than groundwater or requires treatment greater than hypochlorite or ultraviolet light disinfection, such as nitrate treatment, forelog inactivation of viruses, and secondary disinfection, needs to complete a standard permit application as per the guidance in the Public Water Supply Manual Part 2, Community System Design Standards. Links to both the permit application and Part 2 can be found below. Now let's take a look at the application. Section A is the Applicant Identifier. This section is intended to ensure that we gather all relevant information on the public water system that is sending in the application, as well as any partners and stakeholders. Let's look at the information needed for this section. The registered fictitious name is simply the legal name of your business or water system. Next is PWS ID number. For new systems, DEP will assign a number based on the county the system is located and the type of system. For existing systems, the applicant will need to provide the PWS ID number already assigned. For ownership type, enter a one-letter code from this list which is provided in the instructions. Partners and stakeholders shall be completed for all partners and or stakeholders. The first entry should be the main owner of the business and public water system. There is space on the application to list two additional partners and or stakeholders. If there are more than two, submit the information on a separate blank document or print out a copy of this page to fill in the additional information. The facility information should include the physical location of the public water system. Section B on the application is for facility data. Let's look at the information required to complete this section. The population served per day may have to be estimated using the best information available from the system. For a restaurant, this may include counting the number of receipts for the day, total number of employees, reviewing total water usage, and utilizing any other relevant information. For a hospital, this may include the number of patients, employees, and estimated number of visitors. The number of connections should equal the total number of buildings or facilities included in the water system. Let's look at these two examples to clarify how to determine the number of connections at a non-community water system. A campground may have a connection going to each campsite, each restroom or shower facility, office or refreshment stand, and pavilion or other recreational building. In our example, the 100 Pines Campground may count up a total of 315 connections. A business or school, on the other hand, may only have one connection to the system. For example, this business, Eng's Engineering Services, consists of just one building, so it has only one connection. Back to Section B of the application, the number of meters includes the total number of connections that is equipped with a meter. Average daily production is the average volume of daily production in gallons based off of the most recent calendar year. Maximum daily production is the maximum volume of water used in one day. New systems, or systems that don't have information on their maximum production, should reference Section 1 of the Public Water Supply Manual Part 4 Non-Community System Design Standards to estimate the maximum daily production. Hours of operation per day are the number of hours the treatment plan is normally operated each day. For a hospital, this may be 24 hours, whereas an office building may only be open for 10 hours. The system type is either transient or non-transient. Let's review the difference between these two types of systems. A transient system serves 25 or more people at least 60 days per year, but not necessarily the same people on a regular basis. Examples include gas stations, parks, resorts, campgrounds, restaurants, and motels. 
A non-transient system serves 25 or more of the same people at least six months per year. Examples include schools, factories, office buildings, and hospitals. For seasonal systems, enter a season beginning and ending date. Examples of seasonal systems may include resorts and campgrounds. The responsible official is the person responsible for the public water system. If it is a corporation, the application must be signed by a principal executive officer of at least the level of vice president. In the case of a partnership, the application must be signed by a general partner. In the case of a sole proprietorship, the application must be signed by the proprietor. The property owner is the person that owns the property on which the water system is located. This may be the same as one of the partners or stakeholders. Certified water operator should be filled out with the name, certification number, and contact information for the system operator. Non-transient, non-community water systems are required to have a certified operator. Transient systems are not required by regulation to have a certified operator, but may be otherwise required by the department to hire a certified operator. The laboratory that conducts the water quality analysis for the water system must be DEP accredited. A list of accredited laboratories can be found on the DEP website or by following the link below. The next section on the application, Section C, covers documentation required. This section contains checkboxes to ensure the applicant included all required documentation with the application. Let's review the documentation required. New source sampling is required whenever the system is utilizing a new source or for existing sources that have been inactive for two years or longer. A new source is a water supply that does not have a valid existing PA DEP permit or non-community approval. All new source samples shall be collected under pumping conditions toward the conclusion of the pumping test when the water quality characteristics are most representative of operating conditions. Please see the links below for proper guidance on new source sampling from non-transient and transient sources. A treatment system schematic must also be included. This may be computer generated or hand drawn and should include all sources, treatment systems, dimensions of raw and finished water storage vessels, and the entry point monitoring location. Include separate schematics for each entry point. Here is an example of a simple schematic for a non-community system. Note that the well, the treatment, and the entry point 101 tap are all indicated on this schematic. Another requirement is a site map, which should include property lines, buildings, water treatment system locations, well sites, water line distribution system locations, on-lot disposal systems, and sewer line locations. Here is an example of a site map of a campground. Note that it shows the location of the well and treatment plant, water distribution lines, property lines, and all buildings and connections including cabins, campsites, pavilions, and a bathhouse. For equipment and material specifications, include all specifications for all water treatment equipment, piping, paints or coatings which will come into contact with drinking water during and after construction, and water treatment chemicals. This information should be readily available from the manufacturer or found on their website. All materials that come into contact with or affect the quality of the water must be acceptable to the department. Materials which are certified for conformance with ANSI NSF Standard 61 are deemed acceptable to the department. An application fee of $50 made out to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania must accompany each application. Lastly, the applicant shall include an approved erosion and sedimentation control plan when earth moving activities are involved. Section D is intended to ensure that the system is following the general guidelines necessary for the approval of their non-community water system application. Let's review the checklist of information included in Section D. The applicant must first verify that they are using only groundwater, which requires treatment no greater than hypochlorite or ultraviolet light disinfection to meet all primary MCLs established under Chapter 109. Otherwise, the system does not qualify to use the non-community water system application and would instead be required to submit a public water supply permit. All materials must be acceptable by the department. If materials are certified for conformance with ANSI NSF Standard 61, they meet this requirement. If not, the department will review the specifications provided to see if the materials are acceptable. 
All chemicals must also be acceptable by the department. If chemicals are certified for conformance with ANSI NSF Standard 60, they meet this requirement. If not, the department will review the specifications provided to see if the chemicals are acceptable. The system shall be constructed and or modified as per the design standards found in the Public Water Supply Manual Part 4. The system design must provide at least the minimum quantity of peak daily water demand for the system. A minimum flow rate of 2 gallons per minute at each outlet or plumbing fixture should be used. If the system does not have the ability to shut down, the water system must have a way to ensure continuous operation and supply of potable water. It is important to note that if any questions are answered no, the applicant must provide a detailed explanation of how the alternative design will meet the design requirements. Section E, Required Modules, is a checklist of modules that are to be included in the application package. The applicant should check and include all applicable modules. Let's review the six modules and when they must be included with the application packet. Module 1, Groundwater Source, shall be included for all new groundwater sources. A new source is a water supply source that does not have a valid existing DEP permit, BDF approval, or non-community approval. Module 2, Treatment, shall be included for systems installing or modifying sodium hypochlorite disinfection, ultraviolet light disinfection, cartridge filtration, ion exchange softening, and iron and manganese treatment. Systems installing treatment not listed should contact their regional PA DEP office for those requirements. Installation of treatments not listed may require a construction and operation permit as outlined in the department's safe drinking water regulations and meet the design standards in the Public Water Supply Manual Part 2, Community Design Standards. Module 3, Chemical Feed Systems Handling and Storage, shall be included for systems installing or modifying any drinking water chemical addition. Module 4, Pumping Equipment, shall be included for systems installing or modifying pumping equipment. Module 5, Water Storage, shall be included for systems installing or modifying either finished or raw water storage or both. This should not include contact tanks, which will already be listed as part of Module 2. Module 6, Distribution Systems, shall be included for all new non-community water system applications. Section F, Non-Community Summary of the Basis of Design, shall include a written description of the water system. The written description shall start at each source and continue through to the distribution system. Let's look at an example. Here is a schematic for a system that we saw earlier with a well, cartridge filter, and UV light. The written description of this system might be, the water system is supplied by one groundwater source known as well number one. Water from the well is pressurized via a hydropneumatic tank. A raw water tap is available at the pressure tank. The water is then treated for sediment removal via a cartridge filter and disinfected via a UV light equipped with an intensity meter and shutoff solenoid valve. A treated water tap is available for entry point sampling following the UV light. Treated water then enters the distribution system. Section G is for certification that all information provided in the application is true and accurate. After checking the boxes certified that the information provided is true and accurate, the application should be signed and dated by the responsible official. This may be the proprietor, a general partner, or an authorized representative that is responsible for the overall operation of the facility. Once completed, submit the application, the documentation required as we reviewed in Section C, and the $50 application fee, along with all appropriate modules, to the DEP regional office that covers the county in which the water system is located. The instructions include addresses for each DEP regional office. Once again, a separate tutorial is available for each of the modules. Up next in this video series is Tutorial 3, which will cover Non-Community Water System Application Module 1, Groundwater Sources.